Howdy y'all, welcome to the Booth Western Art Museum's Facebook page and my home studio. My name is Miss Lynette and I'm going to be your art teacher today. I'm the Education Outreach Coordinator at the museum and I'm so excited to be doing these videos. They're my favorite part of the week and today we're going to draw something that we have a lot of in the museum. We are going to be drawing a buffalo. I mean bison. Whoops. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Technically they're called bison. I'll get more into the details later. But I love buffalo. I love drawing animals, first of all. So anytime I draw an animal, it's a great time. But buffalo are really awesome. There's a ton of them in the museum. And they're so important because you think of them when you think of the American West. Um, and they're normally I think we think of them in, in how important they are to the culture of American Indians, especially the Plains American Indians. Um, but they're also an American symbol. Um, in like the early 1900s they were trying to design money or currency american money or currency that was unique to america and that you if you saw the coin you would say that's from america and you wouldn't just rag or you know think of it as from another country and so they actually designed the buffalo nickel which i don't have one that's why i have a printout <laughs> but buffalo nickels it was designed by an artist uh, named james earl fraser and they were and they were in a uh, circulation from 1913 to 1938 um but the buffalo nickels are super iconic i mean you think of buffalo as an american symbol um which also i wore a shirt let me kind of show you guys really quick. I wore a shirt with a buffalo nickel on it <laughs> because we had an exhibition in the fall called Warhol in the West, um, which had artwork of Andy Warhol and his uh, very iconic series, um, the Cowboys and Indians. And he had his own paintings of buffalo nickels, which are super cool. And as museum staff, we were like, we want shirts with buffalo nickels on them. So we made them. <laughs> so, um, but like I said, there's lots of buffaloes in the collection, so I'm really excited to do this drawing with y'all today. So just as a reminder, you don't need any fancy materials. You can just use whatever you have around your house. If all you have is a piece of paper and a pencil, that's perfect. <laughs> that's all you're going to need. Um, also, uh, yours does not have to look exactly like mine. I'm going to draw mine even differently, a little bit differently than I did this time because I want to experiment and take risks and um, try something new. So uh, if yours doesn't look exactly like mine, don't worry about it. And finally, uh, this doesn't have to be the best thing that you've ever drawn. This, uh, you know, it's to explore and enjoy the artistic uh, process, um, to try out your artistic skills a little bit and to have a good time. So I hope y'all are gonna join me and draw along with me. So I'm going to switch my camera to show you the table in front of me. And I've also got, oh, hold on. Let me get my table a little bit organized before I show it to you. I'm gonna show you some artwork from our collection that inspired my drawing today that I thought would be really cool to show. So I'm gonna flip my camera around so you can see the table. So you're gonna get a nice view of my ceiling. All right, and while I find the button, there it is. There we go. Okay, let me make sure the camera is all set up good. Looks good to me. Okie dokie. So, these are three different artworks that we have um, in the museum. And I really like these three artworks because... So, they were all made by different artists. This one was made by an artist named Alan Hauser um, in 1960. This one was made by an artist named Buck McCain in 2001. And this is made by an artist named R Amy Ringholds in 2019. So these are all made by different artists at different points in time, and they all look super different. And also on top of that, each of these artists really likes to experiment in their artwork. So I'll kind of talk about each one a little bit. So this one is made by an artist named Alan Hauser. Hold on, let me see. I'm trying to get to focus, but it'll figure itself out. So Alan Hauser is a Chiricahua Apache sculptor, painter, and book illustrator, and he was born in Oklahoma. And I really love his artwork because, especially this piece, there's lots of shapes and movement that are really interesting in it. I really love these shapes of, like, the sky and the wispies here, which actually I included in my own artwork because I really liked it in um, Alan Hauser's. I also really love the movement in this piece because you can really feel like these... Um, 
the horses and the buffalo and the American Indians are moving very quickly in this piece. So this one has good shape and use of movement. This one by Buck McCain is also one of my favorites. Um, he actually grew up as a fifth generation cattle rancher in Southern California. And I really love how realistic and how much texture there is in this piece. Uh, this looks like it could be a photograph and, and it looks so real because you see all the like fuzzy texture on this part of the buffalo hide, but it's a little bit more smooth over here and you get the texture of the grass and the perspective as you go off into the distance and the buffalo gets smaller. And that little use of texture, well not little use, <laughs> there's a lot of it, but just those subtle dif differences and changes in the piece makes it look really real, which I, is why I love this piece. And I love this piece by Amy Ringholtz. Now she is, um, she was born in Ohio and currently lives in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And we actually have this piece. If you go to the Booth Museum website, there is a virtual exhibition available of, a, of an exhibition that she's in called the Jackson Hole Five. There are five women painters that uh, are from or live in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And you can uh, walk through the exhibit like you were there and actually watch videos of each artist talking about their work. So you can actually go in and listen to Amy Ringholtz talk about this very piece. <laughs> it's really cool. I can't stress how cool it is and how, and how much you should go look at it. Um, but one thing I love about Amy Ringholtz's artwork is her use of line and color. She uses lots of these um, inky lines to create outlines for her animals and then even includes colors I don't think you would expect to normally see in a buffalo, like this blue and kind of this brighter orange. And this piece is titled Shield because she drew all of these animals kind of together and she felt like they were almost like a force. So like a wall of protection with all of these animals together. So that's why she titled it Shield. But one thing, so with all of these artists, you can tell they all have their own unique styles. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get it to focus back on the table. It'll figure itself out. So all of these artists have their own unique styles, but they like to experiment within their own style. So Alan Hauser and Buck McCain are also sculptors. So not only do they paint, they sculpt. And Amy Ring holds even experiments. Like this one was painted on wood and she used drawing materials and painting materials. So I want to encourage you, like these artists experimented with their own work, that maybe you could try experimenting in your own drawings as well. So I'm going to now slip these to the side. I'm actually going to keep... I'm going to move, let's see, I'm going to get my drawing in here so I can look at it while I draw. And then I'm going to kind of keep Buck McCain's over here since it's a little bit more realistic and I can use that as a reference for when I'm drawing my own buffalo. Now, I'm going to grab, so I've got my paper, I've got my buffalo over here, getting my table set up. All right, so when you're drawing your buffalo, I drew mine... Buffalo are really big, so you're going to want to make it really big on your paper. And we're going to start by drawing the outlines, which are the really important lines in your drawing, which would be kind of like the outside lines. So buffalo have like a very, their heads are really big. So I'm going to draw, whoop, kind of scratchy today with my drawing. I'm going to draw kind of like a circle shape. It's like a big hump. I don't know how to describe this shape, but you basically have a curved line for the top of the head, and then it's going to kind of slant in at a diagonal here, and then you're going to have another curved line for the mouth or the nose right here. So that's a good start for where the head should go, and then you can draw the back of the buffalo, um, which basically is like a big hill but you're going to want it to peak or be a little bit taller kind of right here behind the head. So basically where the head goes in, you can go, you can make your curved line go in and then go back up because buffalo have these big humps on their back, which I looked up and the humps are basically all muscle. <laughs> it's to hold up their huge head pretty much. And then you're going to kind of flatten it out, go towards the back of your paper like this. And now you're going to want to create another kind of curved line that goes down to make the rump of your buffalo. And now I'm going to go back over here and kind of make, well actually I'll go ahead and finish the back legs and then I'll go back to the front. So for the back legs, um, how I did it 
their their back legs are kind of crazy because they kind of go backwards and then they go a little bit forward so they almost have this like sharp diagonal angle on them so i'll do this very back one first so it kind of goes out like this and you curve it back in and go to the front and then this line can be a little bit more curved it's more like the outside part of the leg here i don't know if that makes sense anyways so now he's gonna need another leg right here so i'm gonna curve so i'm basically making some curved lines because i'm looking at this drawing and i see kind of where the bones are right here that creates this line that goes in because this i'm basically drawing it so that this leg is behind this one and then this one you can also make it curved a little bit. On mine, I made it pretty straight. The nice thing is, you don't have to make this look super exact. This is your drawing. And honestly, uh, you know, I feel like the thing to get, to focus on would be more of the head. And then if you fudge up on the legs, no one's going to notice. Because they're going to be looking at how cool you drew the head of the, your uh, bison. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to finish the leg here. And then we've got to draw the buffalo's belly, which is going to go right under here, where the legs are. And then we've got to draw the rest of um, the buffalo's legs. So I'm going to have the front ones and the front ones on here. And even though I can kind of tell that the leg is a little bit, like these back legs are skinnier, the front legs on a lot of these pictures that I'm looking at have this big fuzzy area in the front leg. So you can make their uh, front legs a little bit more chunky than the back legs. And they're basically just like a almost a cone shape without the cone part. And you know, buffaloes have hooves, so you can, if you want to draw the bottom of their feet, you can draw a straight line like this. But actually, Buck McCain had a really good idea where he said, oh, I'm going to actually draw the buffalo standing in grass, so then I don't have to draw the feet. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually what he was thinking, but I feel like it's a good strategy. So if you want to cover the feet and not have to draw them, you can just draw your grass. And I'm going to, and I just kind of draw grass, just like a loose zigzag line. Get a couple that are crazy wispies going around. And there you go. So we've got kind of the outline. So now I need to go back to the head and add a few more details. So I, let's see, what am I going to draw first? I'll draw the eye first. This is kind of, it's kind of weird. They're cut basically just, you got to kind of guess. Kind of in the middle here. Like if you go from the middle of this uh, part of where the nose mouth is and go up. And then maybe kind of in the middle of this part. Kind of over here. And... Buffalo, they're really big and their eyes are really big, but when you're drawing the whole animal, they look really small. So you don't have to draw a super big eye on your buffalo. It can be very small. Let's see. I'm going to draw mine just a little. I'm even going to draw it a little smaller than that. Let's see. Basically drawing a little hill. And then I like to draw another little hill inside that one. Kind of looks like this. Hmm. Let's see. I think, I think I'm actually going to draw a little bit smaller. Let's see. There we go. Perfect. All right. And then after you draw the eye, you can draw the horn, which kind of goes over here. So basically the horn, the point kind of goes up near this part of the neck. Um, so if you want, you can start with drawing the pointy part and then it kind of curves in like this kind of like that there we go and I'm actually I'm noticing I think I drew my head maybe a little bit too big isn't that crazy buffalo having too big heads unheard of <laughs> but I'm gonna make mine a little bit smaller and see how I like it mm, I think I liked it how I had it before actually I'm gonna put it back just kidding <laughs> All right, so got our buffalo there. And now let's see, we're missing like a nose. So how I drew the nose is basically just creating another circle right here. And then um, I did a kind of a teardrop shape on this side. But when I drew the horse, I did kind of a bean shape. So it's really up to you 
how you want to draw the nose. I'm going to go with the teardrops. I feel like that works really well. Now, one thing that's very important on your buffalo, which I'm realizing I may not have left enough room for over here, so I'm going to make this leg. I'm just moving it over a little bit. Uh, I need to draw a beard on my buffalo, because all buffaloes have beards. <laughs> all that I've seen. So, you need to give your buffalo, um... A nice long beard, create like almost an icicle or zigzag effect, and then erase that part. So the thing, there you go. So now your buffalo's got a beard. Also, your buffalo needs a tail. I can't believe I almost forgot the tail. So you just need to do a nice whooshy line. And then you, I like to create, this is almost like a leaf shape, essentially. So we've got kind of that shape. There we go. All right, I think I included, these I would say are all of the really important outlines of your artwork. So now you can go back in and start adding some other lines. Um, so in this one, I created kind of this, uh, this kind of front part of the buffalo to make it look more furry and this back part to look less fluffy. Um, kind of looking at this painting, which is where I was looking at it, where Buck McCain kind of made it furrier on this part. And that's because buffalo, um, in the winter, they have really thick furry coats, and then when it starts to get in the summertime, they shed the coats, and um, and then you get kind of patches like this in different areas. So that's probably why it's drawn like that. You can draw it however. Let's see. I'm going to do mine, but I'm going to make it a little bit more. I'm going to start where the leg is here. Kind of zigzaggy up like this. There we go. And then you can add, you can kind of see in mine, I drew lots of zigzaggy lines. I think I actually want to, I'm looking at Amy Ringhold's piece, and I really love how she uses all of these kind of squiggly lines all throughout her piece, which is kind of what I was trying to do here. I'm going to do it a little bit more in this one. There we go. Actually, it's really good looking at this because in a lot of buffalo, um, paintings it's sometimes it's hard to see their ears because if they have so much fuzz um or fur around their head it's a little bit harder to see their ears so i like in hers that uh she included ears so maybe we should put some ears in ours i'm looking at it, it looks kind of kind of like big nice and round ears <laughs> all right so i'm gonna i don't know why i'm just the head on this one I just want to change the shape a little bit. So I'm going to do that, make the nose a little bigger. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to kind of go in. I'm even looking at, she's got, Amy uses kind of some zigzaggy lines in here. I'm kind of just, I'm kind of just going. Some straight lines, zigzaggy lines, maybe even some swirly lines and now you can even start thinking about what are you going to want to do with the sky and the grass what colors are you going to make it what time of day is it going to be do you want to put any little plants Ooh, i remember i think on this one i was thinking about it and i was like i kind of want to put a bird on here so i'm going to draw actually here let me draw a little differently so an easy way that you can draw a bird to just do like almost like a wide u shape Make a half circle up here, and then connect it to make the tail. And you can make a little triangle for the beak, a couple legs, put a wing in there. There we go. And the buffalo has a little friend. And then deciding what we're going to do with the sky. I did the, the big swirlies on this one. I think on this one I'm going to do almost some more, well, you know, I really do like the swirlies, so maybe I'll do it again. I thought they looked fun last time, so maybe I'll just try them. Maybe make them a little bit skinnier this time, a little bit thicker in other areas. Let's see, let's start back here. So I'm going to just make one big uh, line. I'm going to do it again. I'll make another one down here. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> That one's a little bit harder to draw because you kind of go in and out of the legs there. All right, so let's do one more, like, big one over here. There we go. There we go. All right, I like this. All right, so now I'm going to go in 
with a Sharpie because I like to have my lines be really dark so I can see them. And also, uh, I may add some other squiggly lines in my artwork that I didn't add here because since I'm going to draw over them with pencil anyways, it might be a little bit faster if I just go in with Sharpie because I'm not too worried about messing them up. The reason I start with pencil and don't draw in Sharpie is like you saw, I was drawing the head of the buffalo and it got a little bit wonky, so I erased it. So that's why I like to draw pencil first, just to make sure I get my lines where I like them, go in with the permanent marker and add some more details. And while I'm doing that, I'll talk to y'all a little bit about buffalo because I looked up some cool facts about buffalo that I wanted to share. Probably the first one is that I've been calling them buffalo, and that's not actually the per correct scientific name for buffalo. So they're actually called bison, and they're only distantly related to buffaloes. So you may think of like an Asian buffalo, uh, Asian water buffalo, or African buffalo, but they're not actually that closely related to them. So they're technically bison. But people have been calling them buffalo for hundreds of years. They're actually, people were calling them buffalo before they were calling them bison. Um, so if you call them buffalo, it's not completely untrue, but if you want to be scientifically accurate, then buffalo is the proper name. Uh, and they are the largest mammal in the United States, which is crazy. I don't know if you've seen them. You've seen one in real life, but they, they're big. They're five to six and a half feet tall, and they weigh one to two thousand pounds, which is crazy. <laughs> also, one thing I forgot to mention, um, if you're drawing it and you want to make your lines, I should have done this, but I wasn't paying attention. Um, but on mine, I kind of made the lines a little bit more squiggly to give that furry effect. So if you want where your lines are straight, you can kind of start to go off and make them a little bit squiggly as you go. Which is okay that I forgot. This can be just a very... Buffalo has a very smooth head, and that's okay. <laughs> Alright, and even if you did this, you could even add a few, a few little extra triangles over here kind of give it like that furry effect like it's got some hair coming off of it there we go all right so um they are also you may think because buffalo are really big that they're slow they're not they can run up to 35 to 40 miles an hour if they're really angry which is super fast <laughs> um and they live about 10 to 20 years um they have a great sense of smell but they actually can't see very well which is, you know, it's all good. They can smell really good. They can smell what they're eating. So they live on the American prairies and plains, which here, I'll kind of point it out. I've got a map over here. So Buffalo used to live in kind of this whole area of the United States, which is a big area. Now they live more towards um, the oldest and largest herd in the United States is in Yellowstone, which is kind of in this Montana, Wyoming, Idaho region. So the region is shrunk. Um, because uh, I will talk about that in a minute, but there's not as many of them as there used to be. Um, but because they live in that plains eat region, they are herbivores, which means that they eat plants, they eat lots of grass and like the shrubs that are out in um, the American plains. And yeah, Yellowstone, let's see, where is I? I'm looking at my notes, sorry. They are migratory, which means, um, you know, if they eat all the grass in one area, they're going to move to the next area where there's grass to uh, eat more over there. Or if there's like a bunch of bugs that are biting them in one area, they'll move <laughs> to another area and find something else to eat in a different spot. Um, and uh, Yellowstone National Park, yeah, it has the oldest and largest bison herd in the U.S. Um, and I kind of mentioned earlier about the hump. Um, the reason they have a hump on their back that's so big is, is partly because their heads are so big. And part of the reason why their heads are so big is sometimes they'll bump heads when they're fighting, but also if it's really snowy, um, they'll use their heads almost like a plow and like move their heads side to side in the snow to get to the grass that's underneath. So their heads have to be really strong if they're going to, you know, protect themselves and also to find that grass in the winter. Right. 
right, so now I'm going to go in and kind of finish these other detail lines. Uh, one thing I thought was really fun that I actually didn't know, so um, baby buffalo or the calves, they're also called red dogs because when they're born they have a very reddish coat. And I've got a little picture over here. That's also after this video, if you want something fun today, just go look up pictures of baby buffalo or baby bison or red dogs. <laughs> they are so cute. Who doesn't love a baby animal? <laughs> All right, yeah, and I mentioned that their fur sheds, because sometimes I noticed that their coats looked inconsistent, so I was trying to look up why their coats always don't look the same. It's because they grow more fur in the winter and have less in the summertime. So I mentioned that there are less buffalo now than there used to be in the past. And um, American Indians, when we say Plains American Indians, I'm talking about indigenous tribes who lived in the Great Plains or still live there. And that includes tribes like the Blackfoot, Cheyenne, Comanche, Crow, Lakota, Kiowa, Apache, Hidatsa, Mandan, Pawnee, and there are many, many more that I'm not naming, but that's just some that you may have heard before. But they relied on the buffalo and hunted buffalo because uh, they needed buffalo to survive. Um, but uh, people started hunting buffalo more and more, not just American Indians, and they hunted them almost to extinction, which means that there were almost none left. Uh, and then people realized, oh no, <laughs> we can't let the buffalo go away. And so now a lot of buffalo live on um, uh, nature, wildlife preserves, um, and reservations where they are protected. So they're still, there's, they're not technically endangered anymore, I don't believe. Um, but there's still not a lot of them. There's not a lot of them in the, in the wild that I'm aware of. Um, let's see. Do I have any other things I wanted to talk about? Okay, but I will start talking about, because I have some cool things I want to show y'all. But one reason why the Plains American Indians would hunt for buffalo is because um, they lived during a time where there was no Kroger to go get your groceries at. There's no Amazon to order your clothes from or any other odd things that you need for your house. Um, so they had to be creative and inventive and use what they could find from the land around them to survive. Um, and so there were lots of buffalo that uh, lived where they lived and they would uh, hunt the buffalo and, and they used almost all parts of the buffalo um, in different ways. Okay, so now that I've got a lot of my main lines drawn, one thing you can think about in your drawing too is using a variation of lines, like really thick lines and really thin lines. So I'm actually gonna go back on some of my sky uh, wispies here and make the lines a little bit thicker because I want them to stand out. Normally, if you wanna make a line thicker, um, then that is going to, it's gonna draw your eye to that area first. So if I make this thicker, it means you'll probably look at it first. So you want to make sure you use thicker lines on things that you think are very important to the drawing. I'm going to make this bottom part thicker, but just in the, just in kind of this area. Let's see. I'm also going to make this line a little bit thicker. Kind of the fuzzy part of the buffalo here. And then, let's see. There we go. And then I'm going to go back in and add some other random lines through here, taking a bit of Amy Ringholtz inspiration, creating lots of wispies, do a little squiggly line, do some straight lines, the head here, make them fuzzy. All right. All right. So Plains American Indians, they lived off of the land and even said that the buffalo were their teachers, that they taught them how to live off of the land and be resourceful with their natural resources. Um, and also because bison, like I said, they're really big and they're strong and they're fast. I've even heard that they can be more dangerous than a bear just because of their size. 
So they're difficult to hunt, so if you went through all the trouble, you would want to make sure it was worthwhile and that you used everything that you were given. Um, let's see. And the Plains American Indians also were nomadic tribes, so like the buffalo moved around to find uh, more food. That's what the Plains American Indians did, and they would follow the buffalo from place to place. And they actually lived in houses that you've probably heard of before called teepees. And they were made out of buffalo hide and could easily be um, torn down and um, set back up again um, so that they could move around more quickly. All right. And I'm just kind of adding some dots in here. I'm just taking my time a little bit. Ooh, I didn't realize how much time I was taking up, guys. <laughs> Sorry, this one might be a smidge longer than normal. I apologize. All right, so I think I'm good with all my line drawings here. So now I think I can start going in with color. And you can use whatever, if you want to, you could just make this all black and white or you could add um, color that you want to use. And one thing you can think about is do you want your colors to be very realistic, like Buck McCain's artwork where he had very realistic colors, or you could do something like mine where they're brighter colors and more saturated. I'm going to draw mine a little bit differently than last time. Let's see. What colors do I want to use? Let's see, I've got... I'll use a brown. I'll just do a little bit to get started. Just so you can kind of see how I color it. Is there like a lighter brown in here? There's a lighter brown crayon. That'll work. <laughs> use a combination. So whenever you go in to draw your buffalo, you don't have to be super exact about it. I'm even going to try out because, again, I think Amy Ringhold's piece is just very cool. And I like that she uses the blue in there. I even see some blue on the ear. So I'm actually going to try that out myself. I'm going to use this lighter blue that I have. I'm going to draw some of the ear in there with the blue. What? <laughs> Blue and a buffalo, that's crazy. Even go back in with this brighter orange. And I'm just I'm just going about it being a little bit scribbly with my drawing. Not being super exact about it. There we go. There we go. I think this looks very cool. And also, one thing I love in artwork is when you layer colors on top of each other. So, you know, going in with this darker brown, going back in with this orange, seeing how the colors mix when they sit on top of each other like this. Yeah, I really like the blue in there. That looks really cool. And also, blue and orange are complementary colors. So that's why they look very good next to each other. And I even think I may do some complementary colors with the grass in the sky that aren't blue and orange. My goodness. <laughs> that's crazy. That's what we're here for. I said I was going to experiment and take some risks in my drawing. All right. So I'm actually going to really quickly show you some cool stuff that I grabbed for this video because I thought... They were super interesting. So like I was talking about with Plains American Indians, they would use pretty much every part of the buffalo. I don't know a part of the buffalo that they didn't use, but I actually have some of the educational materials that the Booth Museum uses for tours where we teach about buffalo. Um, and I have some different parts of the buffalo that I can show y'all today. So I have this part of the buffalo right here, which some of you may be able to guess what this is. You're right, it is a buffalo horn. So kind of like in my drawing where you see it's got that nice curved shape. So the buffalo horn, it's very tough and hard. And they would use these, um, you know, they would put things in them and use them as containers. I actually don't think there's any evidence where they would cut this off and blow into it like a musical instrument. Um, but they would definitely use them as like a scoop or even a cup to drink out of and maybe, you know, a spoon to cook with if you cut it this way. Um, 
and they could use this as a water bottle, but there's actually another part of the buffalo that's even better to use for a water bottle. Now, it is a little bit gross, but this is a part of the buffalo. Does anyone have any guesses? Any thoughts? What is that? This is actually the buffalo bladder. So, it is also... It is completely sanitary if you think about the bladder. It's just what's inside is gross. But the actual organ itself is very clean. And once it dries like this, uh, you can fill it up and then it collapses. Um, and it's very lightweight. Um, so this is, I think this is just something really cool to, <laughs> that I like to show off. I know it's kind of gross, but it is very fun. Uh, the last thing I also had today was this. Anyone guess what this is? This is the buffalo tail, so you can kind of see this one has been sewn onto a stick to keep it nice and sturdy. Um, but, but this one had a lot of different uses. You could use it as a fly swatter, you could use it to dust, you could even use it as a big paintbrush to use on your teepees to like paint some cool designs on it. Um, let's see, anything else? A duster? You could decorate it with it. You could put some of this on your clothing to look very fashionable. <laughs> So there you go. So here, I'll kind of put them all out on the screen so you can see them one more time. But these are, we use these when we give tours and talk about Buffalo with the kids and tell them that there are lots of different creative and inventive ways that Plains American Indians use the Buffalo. So you've got the horn to use as a container, a scoop, the tail as a fly swatter, decoration, a big paintbrush, and even the bladder to use as a water bottle or a container for water. So those are just a few things that I have. And also, it's time for me to ski daddle. So I'm going to finish this drawing off screen. And then I will post a picture of it as soon as I finish it. Hopefully within the next hour or two. And before you, when you finish your artwork, or before you finish, you're definitely going to want to write your name on it. Because all artists will sign their work so people know that you drew this and not someone else in your household. So you can hide your signature. You know, I may even put my signature up here in the cloud wispy, or you can put it in the bottom corner of your painting or drawing, excuse me. You could be painting though. Who's to say? There we go. All right, so I've got my name in there. Beautiful, I'm really excited about this. Uh, so I'm gonna flip my camera around. So really quickly, so you'll get a nice, View of my ceiling. Here we go. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Stay. <laughs> all right. Well, I, thank you all so much for joining me while I started drawing my buffalo. I will finish it soon and let y'all see it. And I would love to see what y'all are drawing because it's so fun to see how people think of things differently and how they do their line work and artwork differently. So I'd love to see what you drew. You can send it to us. You can post it as a, a reply or a comment in this video. Or if you post it on any of your social media, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, and you use the hashtag Booth Museum, I'll be able to see it and see what you drew. And sometimes we even post your pictures. So you may even get a little feature on the website or on our Facebook page, which would be very cool. <laughs> Um, if you want any additional resources that the booth has to offer, you can sign up for our booth email updates, which will give you, um, you'll receive information about the latest news and resources that the museum has to offer. Um, right, we recommended a book this week, um, called Where the Buffalo Roam, Bison in America. It's by Kate Waters. Um, it's a Penguin Young House Reader's book and it's around ages like six to eight um but you can get that on amazon so that's a book recommendation if you want something to go along with the buffalo or want to learn a little bit more we also have some really cool family gallery guides so when we have uh, temporary exhibitions we make a guide for families for when they're looking around the exhibit of things they can ask about the artwork and learn more and we have a um we have two available one is actually on one of it's one of my favorite temporary exhibits. It was the wildlife art of Guy Koliak. He's one of the most acclaimed, well-known wildlife painters um, in, in the world. And we had an exhibition of his work that had lots of animals and there's a gallery guide that has a picture of a buffalo on it. Also, I mentioned that we had our Warhol in the West exhibition uh, with the uh, Buffalo Nickel by Andy Warhol. And that family guide is available on the website if you wanna go check out and learn some stuff by Andy Warhol. Um, 
I think that's all I have to say. So I'll be here drawing again next week, uh, May 12th. Uh, to, it's on a Tuesday, same time, 1045, same place, the Booth Western Art Museum Facebook page. And it's time for me to skedaddle because I got to finish my drawing. <laughs> so thank you all so much for tuning in. This is, uh, has been wonderful and is my favorite part of the week. Um, and I'm so looking forward to seeing you again next time. So thank you for joining the Booth Western Art Museum and I as we uh, work to share America's story. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye.